and welcome to Live in the Solution. I'm your astrologer and tarot card reader, Mary Trimble, here with your readings for March the 2nd through March the 8th. Oh my God, guys, you don't know. <laughs> if you're checking out your sun, moon and rising, I've said it to a couple of videos before. I mean, I have just gone through hell the last uh, couple of weeks with Mercury in retrograde, really. I just, I recorded six videos tonight, no audio 12 last week no audio and I had luckily I had the tight shot now so I was able to ex extract the audio from the other video and line it up I mean it <laughs> took me three hours each video just to edit drama and that's going to take me uh three hours for each of the first six ones so it was so simple I, I did some tests and I messed around and it was the volume on the mic that had been knocked down. Oh, God. <laughs> because the levels, we, the levels were working in the software. Oh, my goodness, right? Drama. Mary, our lady of perpetual drama. <laughs> so, listen, guys, uh, these are general readings therefore the collective take what resonates leave the rest listen if it doesn't resonate check out your moon and rising uh, some people even check out their venus you can do that too particularly if you're interested in relationships now um what was i going to say yeah darling if you want a personal reading or private personal private private personal reading click on this link here and that'll take you to my website you can see the kind of readings i offer and let's go to your cards without further ado this is for capricorn what wonderful gifts guidance blessings and helpful information can you give capricorn through these cards for march the second through march the eighth So guys, there's lots of crossover here. So check out your moon and rising. Um, yes, the first card out for you is the Four of Swords. The Four of Swords is exhaustion, darling. It is mental exhaustion that's turned into physical exhaustion. This is like, when this card comes in, you're being asked to you're being asked to rest. You know, you've got to get enough sleep. You've got to get enough hydration. You've got to feed yourself properly. I mean, this is in loads of cards this week. And it really, you know, Mercury is doing somersaults, guys, this week. <laughs> so, you know, it's like we, we have this tendency to be in our head and maybe think the worst case scenario. It just takes a toll on us emotionally. Um, so it's really important to make sure that you're sleeping. Go to bed early. Go against the grain. Like I, I made myself go to bed early last night and I didn't, I haven't slept that well in like, I don't know how long. Meanwhile, now I'm burning the midnight oil because I screwed up on all the readings, but that's another story. I digress. <laughs> okay, so clarifying the Four of Swords is the Ace of Wands. Oh, this is beautiful. A beautiful new beginning, darling. This is, this is the spark that lights a flame that sets a huge fire um, blazing. So the potential for this is amazing. And it is a brilliant idea. This, and you know, it doesn't surprise me because Mercury is moving into uh, 
back is backtracking into Aquarius this week. So really incredible, forward thinking, innovative, outside of the box ideas will come to us. So um, just make sure that you are well rested so that this can come through for you. Because if you're not well rested, you won't get this idea. Now, the next card out for you is the world. This has also come in one other reading, actually. I can't remember which one it was. But the world is all about, look, this is about a change. Look, you, you have all this life experience, right? And you can, you're at this point in your life where you have a choice to take a different path like put your life in a different trajectory. This can be sometimes, you know, it's, you can start your life purpose or you can start a business or, you know, doing something differently. Because you can do everything the same that you have been doing and you will get the same old results. Whatever's happening will happen again. But this is your chance to change your life and the universe will have your back in this change. Now, clarifying this, the world is the tower. So, so I feel that something has to go. I feel that that's why the world's here to change to change your trajectory. Something's got to go. If it doesn't go, it's going to be taken. You know, the tower comes in and it breaks things down. It's like Uranus is coming in to shake the earth. State, you know, maybe you've been coasting. Maybe you've just, you know, been existing and not living. And Uranus comes in and changes all that. For You know, something needs to be shaken up. You need to be shaken up. You know, you need to get up and do something differently. If you want a different life, you have to do something different, right? So this is an urgent call. Look, the tower doesn't feel great. It doesn't because, you know, by this time, we probably you've probably known that you need to change. You know that something has to go. You know that you've got to do something different. And if you're not already doing it, it's going to come crashing down around you and you're going to be forced to do something differently. Um and maybe some of you are already doing it, so the tower will not have that big an impact on you. Um, now, the next card out, did I show the tower? I don't know if I showed the tower. There you go. The next card out is the Seven of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles is saying that you really need to assess, right, what's going on. So... You have to look at all the effort and the energy that you've put into something. Has it given you the return that warrants all the energy and the effort that you've put into it? So this is saying you need to assess. You need to know, do you need to tweak? It's not like you just stop doing it. You know, look, he's working in the fields and he takes a moment to admire the fruits of his labor and he's really reckoning in his mind, okay, I've got this, 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 and this, and I put, I did all this work. Am I getting enough back? Did it, do I have enough? Am I reaping enough benefits from it? Is the harvest big enough? Is the harvest, harvest worth all the work I put into it? And if not, then maybe you need to tweak it. Maybe you need to do something a little different, you know? Maybe you need to do something different. The tower. So this is about really, um, it's really about doing the books, balancing the books in some way. And look, clarifying the seven of pentacles is, is the two of wands. And the two of wands is, the two of wands is all about, look, the ball's in your court. You have... You have a decision to make and you can go in any direction. I feel like the world is in the palm of your hands and you can 
um, go forward. You, you know, sometimes this is about going further afield, right? Thinking bigger is what I'm getting for you. Maybe you need to think bigger. Maybe you've been too focused on, on something that's small. You have to think bigger to create something bigger, right, than what you have. So I feel that you have an opportunity here to really do some brainstorming. And I feel that this is that idea, but you've got to have enough sleep. You've got to have enough rest for this to come through. This is going to come through. And I really think that you are going to be able to take action and you're going to really be able to plan for something bigger, right? I feel that you're going to go, you can see, you've got to see the bigger. You've got to go for more is what I'm getting. So sometimes, you know, if, you know, you can think of opening a shop, well, think about the chain, you know, don't think about one shop, think about a brand and a, and a whole chain. Is that kind of bigger. Your dreams are a little too small, I think. And you have to, you know, maybe you've been working with one bush and you may need to work with acres, you know. This is about seeing something, it could be global or international. You've got to really think big. And you know, the universe will, will back you in it. There's no limit, you know, how big can it go? So I would definitely do make a plan for that. Because I think the bigger you go, the less likely something like the tower will affect you. Right? You're going to go bigger. Capricorn, thank you so much for tuning in. Please stay tuned for the astrological report coming up next. And please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Mwah! I love you all. And I'll see you on the other side. Hello everyone, I'm so glad that you decided to stay on and listen to the astrology report on what is going on in the celestial sky this week. So we start on Tuesday, March the 3rd. Venus is square Saturn. What is that? It's, it's not a harmonious aspect. It is a contentious aspect. There may be distance or detachment within your relationship. You may be feeling that during this transit. As a result, intimacy could take a backstage during this time. And it might be wise to spend some time in solitude, you know, in meditation and reflection, because um, melancholy and depression uh, can occur. But know that this will pass soon enough. I mean, that's why it's called a transit, right? Because it's transiting. It's moving. Um, so it's a temporary feeling. Now, um, your finances could take a hit too. So resist the urge to spend because you're not feeling great. Maybe you're feeling melancholy and you want to buy something to make yourself feel better. Resist that urge. I would be very conservative with your finances at the moment. Um, I mean, we've seen this play out on the uh, global stage. You know, the, mar the financial markets are plummeting because of the coronavirus because products can't move around, you know. A lot of countries have closed their borders. So just be conservative and um, with your spending. Now, on March the 4th, uh, 2020, Mercury backtracks into Aquarius. And when I say backtrack, you know that Mercury is in retrograde, right? And it moved from, uh, from Aquarius into Pisces on February the 3rd. And now it is reversing and going back into, from Pisces into uh, Aquarius. But the good news is that Mercury goes direct on uh, March the 9th, around the t on the same day as the full super full moon in Virgo. And actually, this is interesting because Mercury rules the sign Virgo. So things are going to start to pick up. And Mercury will then move into Pisces a week later on the 16th. So then it's really going to pick up speed. 
Um, so this is good news, guys. Mercury in Aquarius gives us clarity and focus. But when in Pisces, Mercury expresses its creative side, you know, um, creative writing, fantasy, uh, poetry, art and music. However, in Aquarius, Mercury is more innovative, scientific, analytical and forward thinking. So we can enjoy uh, that aspect of it. Um, until the 16th when it moves back into Pisces and then we can enjoy expressing itself creatively. Now, on the same day, a bit later on in the afternoon, 4.24 p.m. precisely, um, Eastern Standard Time, Mercury is sextile to Venus and that is a harmonious relationship. So Mercury is in this lovely harmonious transit um, socializing will become easier. In fact, you might be more open to going out and hanging out and your charisma and magnetism and charm will foster intimacy during that time. So this is a lovely, um, beautiful energy. So relax, enjoy this cosmic blessing while it lasts. Now also, on, later on that night at 10.07 p.m. precisely, uh, Eastern Standard Time again, so it's the next day in Europe, Venus moves into Taurus. The goddess of love is coming home. She'll be at ease. She'll be more practical. She'll be more affectionate. However, she may be a little possessive, you know, because, <laughs> you know, Taurus is all about mine, possessions, you know. Um, so she's looking, Venus is looking for security and in love and fi in her relationships and finances. So reassure your partner with love and affection and focus on your improving your finances. Ask yourself, what needs my attention most right now? Is it my relationship? Is it my finances? Is it both? <laughs> Now, on Sunday, March the 8th, the sun is conjunct Neptune. That means that it is together. They're really, they're almost like one. So the sun's energy and Neptune are, you can hardly tell the difference between the two. They just come together. They become one, right? Um, now, you may, you know, Neptune is very idealistic. So you may have the urge to want to help the less fortunate or the um, marginalized around the world. Um, idealism is front and center during this transit. And your sensitivity to others' energy is really increased. So you really need to protect yourself. You need to be around positive people and situations. So because, you know, there's two sides to, to Neptune. Neptune can take you down the rabbit hole too. So you want to be surrounded yourself uh, with positivity and perhaps consider doing a media fast. I mean, you know, sometimes your, your empathy is, is so enhanced that it can really take a toll on your emotions. So um, you could feel melancholy or depressed. On the other hand, you might be exhilarated and inspired to help uh, humanity at large. You know, you'll get a lot of joy by um, volunteering or, you know, with a cause or helping in some way. Um, so, you know, look at where you can help. Ask yourself, how can I contribute to society? Now, um, also on Sunday at 3.38 p.m., Venus <laughs> comes together with Uranus. Wow, this can be scandalous. This transit can bring in um, the urge for, you know, a thrill, for excitement, um, novelty, you know, the new, constantly looking for something new and exciting in love and finance. Um, so you are ready for a thrill. <laughs> 
The energy and magnetism of this transit could have you acting a bit out of character. It's kind of palpable, right? Um, you might be enticed to have a, a romantic fling or a one-night stand. Perhaps your relationship has been a bit boring or perhaps hit a stagnant patch um, and you may feel like you want to explore new horizons or new experiences with other people. Um, I would just say this, keep in mind that this feeling will not last and you very well might regret the impulsive actions or decisions under this influence. So keep that in mind, guys. Now on Monday, I'm not going to go into this, but I'm just going to mention it because it is good to be prepared. We have the full, full, the super full moon in Virgo. A super full moon is when the moon is, or a planet is very close to uh, Earth. And so this is a very, very strong energy. And also, Mercury goes direct on the same day. So that's really interesting. Listen, guys, join my astrology group. Um, Live in the solution. The, the link will be below. It's a private group. And every two weeks, I do a live feed which correlates either with the new moon or the full moon. And we look at exactly how you are receiving the energy of the, the new moon or the full moon, respectively. We have fun. It's a very positive, uplifting, uh, nurturing group everyone's happy it's lovely um, so I do that uh, for the group every two weeks so um, it's a private group you just have to ask uh, to join answer a couple of questions and hey presto you're in um, so guys I just want to mention that this is a member supported channel and one way of course one way to to support me is giving me a thumbs some thumbs up liking my videos, sharing them on other social media platforms, and commenting. You know, shoot me a comment. I love that. I answer every comment. I love interacting with you guys. It really feeds my soul. And um, another way to support me is join my channel. I now have a membership to the channel. So there's a button that says join, and there are two levels of membership, and I give perks. And there's a mem there's a the community tab is where the members hang out. I'm going to do videos um, designed just for members. So it's, you know, that's so it's the, the lowest membership fee is $1.99 a month. Now, another way to support me is through Patreon darling. And right here, if you click on this link, you can go to my Patreon page and check it out. You can be a supporter for just a dollar a month. It's $12 a year, guys. It's not that lot. It's not a lot, but it's huge for me. That all, you know, adds up. And I, and I want to take this opportunity to thank my members and to thank uh, my patrons. I've just started the membership, so it's pretty new. Um, so guys, what else? I think that's it. Of course, get a reading, guys. <laughs> I live to give readings. Go to my website. You know, you can, there's actually links below to my website. Go and check out the kind of readings that I offer and all the services that I offer. Um, guys, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I love you all. And I'll see you next week. Oh.